Keep your fantasy team in tip-top shape with the help of LOLesports.com. There you can stay current on the latest LCS news with stats, box scores, and player profiles that will have you dominating your league, just like the Team Liquid Jungler or me. Now we're going to dive ourselves right into the next match. It's Cloud9 versus Gravity. Now, both of these groups are adjusting to changes in their team, and not the least of which is new shot calling rules. True. Uh, now, as far as the shot caller adjustments that are going on, Medios does have the benefit of doing it for a longer period of time. You know, he was sharing the task with High pretty much all split long. Bunny Fufu, on the other hand, is not only stepping into the captain's chair, but he is also adjusting to a new AD carry. So shot calling on the LCS level, of course, that takes a long time to perfect. And Gravity, as we've already seen in week one, have shown some areas for improvement. You know, they they didn't all pull off of Baron at the same time, which is one of the first things that you need to get down. They also had split focus as far as tower diving uh, compared to going for an objective. So uh, spreading their resources a little bit too thin. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if they can shore up those weaknesses. But meanwhile, Cloud9 are still working through their own adjustment period, as is evident from their one-sided loss against Team Dignitas. Ooh, yeah. Cloud9, they went back to that Kog'Maw mid, which they did all of week one. Uh, it takes a long time to scale up, and it doesn't have early game pressure. Plus, they had they comboed that with Ash, who also is an AD carry with no dashes. So Azingi was able to bring the Zac attack, shutting down Sneaky, and leaving Cloud9 without anything to do in from basically five minutes on in that game. So we'll see uh, if they were taking notes, um, and we'll have to see if a similar approach can be taken against Cloud9 in this game, early jungle pressure. Absolutely, because right now it feels like Sneaky is really the definite strongest point for Cloud9, the one that's still doing very well mm -hmm. in the games. But on the other side, of course, it's not often that pros can handpick and groom their successor, but Cops had a chance to do exactly that and says that his bottom lane of Alltech and Bunny are poised to be a powerhouse duo in Gravity. I've only played with Cop in my competitive career. So I think playing with Alltech is a great opportunity. We'll have Cop like right behind us the whole way, so I think that's even better. I felt he would fit my role in the team, but a little better than I did. He played similarly to me, but I feel like if I teach him more, he can be even better. We've known each other for maybe two or three years, so we're really close. He's been wanting to step down for the last split. He just wanted to find someone that's equal in terms of level or even better. I had been thinking about quitting for, I think, more than a year. I don't know, I just sort of wanted a break. I wanted to do something I might like more, which would be coaching. I'd still be able to like go to Worlds, which is my dream, but in a different way. Bringing in Alltech, who like has the drive to play 10 games a day and we got to know him a lot because he was our neighbor. He knew all the players on our team because he lived right down the street, and so we already had that friendship going, which is just good for the team environment. Alltech's personality is actually a lot like me and Cops. Kind of surprising because we're kind of outside the box weird, I guess. They're both actually really motivated. They want to play the game, they want to learn, they want to just get better together, and so they duo a ton, which is something I could never really like give the money. I'm still really young, so I think that's one of, uh, one of the things I have. You know, it's, it's not work for me, it's just like me trying to improve and have, have a fun time. Cop, he still wants what's best for the team, so he knows the potential we have together and I think he'll help us get there. I feel like Cop can be a really good coach and I can learn a lot from him just because he used to be a, an AD player. He comes to me with more questions because as most players want, they want like a second-hand opinion, and I have pretty reliable opinion for him to look back on. Our main problems from, I guess, week one of LCS was that we just weren't really on the same page. The scenario where that happened was when we were doing Baron, and then I think only move stayed on and everyone peeled out. Right Funny, wanted them to finish it, then fight, and he was gonna sacrifice himself. Vayne cannot join this fight. It's a 3v5 fight. <laughs> Sedrani, 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 Sedrani. Finish Baron, finish Baron Silver, finish Baron Silver. A bit of a stun to buy some time. Trashy goes down to Keen. Body drop forced to run. Otter has joined in. Move forward. Oh, oh. Flash away from Baron. Baron's Body alone. drop goes down. Anox gets the kill, but it's going to be traded back on. But the Vayne cleanup is here. That is an ace for enemy esports. I feel like if Cop and Saint were still on the team, they would ha at least have a really clear understanding of what to do mid to late game. And I think that's a huge thing that we're lacking right now. I'm going to be working a lot with Bunny because we're trying to make him our 
dedicated shot caller. Once we just get more clear calls, I think we'll be a lot stronger. I definitely have high hopes for me and Bunny that we can be a really strong bottom lane. When we first started, we were getting stomped. As of right now, we have been going even or sometimes even winning, so I think that's, that's really been a positive note. In a short period, they'll have really good synergy and they'll be a really, really strong bot lane. I honestly view our duo as a trio with Cop, so I have high hopes just because of how well we all work together. Well, I guess it's the first trio lane then in the LCS pop coming in to add a lot of extra insight to a lane specifically. And I do think it's actually interesting seeing a, a player turn coach because they obviously have way more insight into a specific role. And so sort of, you know, how he can help sort of shape that new duo is interesting. Mm -hmm. He's trying to bond with the young guys too. They're yeah. trying to be hip, so hanging out at the skater <laughs> park. They got their <laughs> leather jackets. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Overall, though, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun watching uh, that entire team develop. Of course, Bunny saying it's it's of course difficult to both shot call and learn to duo with it, a new guy. So it definitely is. Yeah, it'll be an interesting road for both teams as we move on to the rest of the split. Let's check out the starting lineups though. On the blue side, it's Cloud Nine, Balls in the top lane, Medios in the jungle, Incarnation in mid, Sneaky on AD carry, and Lemonation on support. And on the red side, it's Gravity, Hauntzer up top. In the jungle, they've got Move, Mid, Keen, AD Carry, All Tech, and support, <laughs> support of course, Bunny Fufu. And we gotta figure out the new uh, duo name for All Tech and Bunny Fufu. They don't like sort of run together. How about well? All Tech and Bunny Fufu? I think you got it already. All Tech and that's just it doesn't roll off the tongue very well. I feel like you're not that's in, fine. you're not inventive enough. I think we need something really intricate and crazy at a level esports. Hashtag LCS Big Duo Lane.